Hey everyone, back with another buffalo riding adventure. Um, we are going to finish up the buffalo portion of our uh, 360 tutorial example and then um, experiment a little bit with transitions and uh, work our way into another scene. So, um, I uh, don't know if you would do this exact thing, depending on your material, you might do something very different. But at the end, I had this, um, I had this buffalo rider that was looking um, so majestic against the, the silhouetted uh, sunset. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to try to get a silhouetted sunset in my 360 um, view? So I kind of, <laughs> kind of faked it in Photoshop um, to plop him on there. It's a uh, it's a little homebrew, I admit, um, but basically all I did here is um, I selected um, in a pretty uh, simplistic way with the quick selection tool. I just like went into Photoshop, selected my trees. Um, I wasn't too fussy about it uh, if this were like, you know, not... Um, a man riding a buffalo for a demo purposes I might I might get more specific with all of these individual leaves and stuff but um, when it you know caught some of the sky I was just like oh well good enough um, <laughs> so forgive the quickness but this was my plan once I get down to about there I grab the rectangular marquee tool hold shift and select the rest of it in big um, big chunks and uh, you know, if, if you're feeling ripped off by, uh, by this part, you know, we can, we can try to get the magic wand in there, hold alt to, to subtract a selection, you know, um, do what you can and, uh, and so I, I ended up with something like that. Um, you get too subtraction happy, uh, then you then you end up losing more than you want. Um, so so then I just um, I added a new layer. I did select modify feather and just feathered the edges of my selection a little bit. Um, that's sort of where you. Uh, get a little softness, but also lose a lot of those tiny little islands in the selection. Um, and uh, and then that was the basic um, silhouette. Uh, I would grab the background adjustment, um, image adjustments, and then uh, hue saturation. I pushed it towards the purple because that's... Um, that's the color of my sunset in the image I'm trying to match. And then the last thing I did is I kind of threw a real soft orange um, along the horizon and um, actually did that in a uh, in its own layer so that I could do um, like a multiply blend mode on it. Um, and uh, and then maybe a little bit of a soft, um, soft eraser here to bring back just some of the light. Um, so I don't know. I'm calling that good. <laughs> and um, and like I said, this isn't like a hugely uh, important part of the tutorial, except that um, I think it's going to give us a good excuse to make a transition. So I'm going to save this. Um, and then when I pop back into Premiere, um, this will be uh, updated from the last version because I, I saved it as the exact same file name. Um, but that's, um, that's more or less um, my goal. Now, right now, we've got a hard blink transition between daylight and dusk here. And this um, is the reason I put you through all that is I thought uh, this would be a good excuse for us to have a transition um, before our final majestic silhouette scene. 
Um, now, you could just do uh, a default cross dissolve between these two, and that'll, um, that'll kind of suffice. And you could drag it uh, wider, of course, to make it um, a slower transition. And, uh, you know, that might actually be the appropriate thing if we're doing dawn to dusk, um, and I could leave it there. But I do want to make you aware that um, Premiere has a lot of VR transitions um, that are specifically designed to deal with the 360 sphere. Um, the reason these exist, uh, some of them are versions of the, the same kind of thing that you have um, under your normal video transitions. But if a transition animates across the poles, it will get bent um, because of the projection um, of 360. So if there's anything that appeals to you um, that does a kind of a wipe, um, these can be interesting in VR. They uh, are generally regarded as a little cheese ball in, um, in the... Uh, regular world of video and i think in equirectangular you might still be thinking ah, yeah that is a little cheese ball but in a headset um these can sometimes be useful to direct our attention you know you have to imagine if the last thing we were looking at was over here um or even better like over here and then out of nowhere the sky starts to change over and you're like oh i'm following the movement over to here maybe um, and so what's cool about these is you can select them um, and then under effect controls you get to choose um, the feather of these edges so they don't have to be a hard um, you know kind of Warner Brothers that's all folks ending you know you can you can turn up the feathering uh, quite a bit so that it's much more subtle um, you can also change the what what they're calling the point of interest um, and for this, I might actually be an equirectangular so that I can see um, what the point of interest is, because I ultimately might want to guide people's eyes over to where the buffalo rider is going to show up. So now, if we were looking over here, let's say we were watching this video, and then it fades, then we start to get our iris wipe whoa and i am inclined to look up and over and follow it to its quote unquote point of interest right to its end point and that's where the buffalo rider will appear um if you're looking at the sky this feathered iris wipe um, is suddenly a lot more like a cross dissolve it's just a cross dissolve that has some vector of you know kind of movement like it has a directionality to it um, when you feather it out like this, you know, if it's not feathered at all, this is a way different, much more cartoony look. But if it's feathered in the headset, um, this almost functions like a cross dissolve. It's, it's, uh, feels much less cheesy than it looks, um, in, in the wider. Um, so, uh, there's other options too, though. You can go uh, exploring and see which of these do anything for you. Some of them are, um, there's no saving them. They just are cheesy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and some of them are, are okay. Um, so you're, you're just going to have to experiment and see what you like. But uh, for me, um, just for the sake of doing something slightly um, more than the than the typical cross dissolve, uh, I'm going to try that iris wipe. <laughs> 